The Secret Service is on high alert amid a reported Iranian plot to kill Donald Trump. Eric Prince is a former Navy SEAL and security expert. Eric, this news just broke today. How credible is this that the intelligence with the Iranians are trying to make a move against Donald Trump? I think this is a uh, desperate effort to deflect from a completely botched job of protecting the leading Republican candidate and front runner for the next presidency. Um, this idea that uh, it, that's pretty thin. They could, they could, someone can always say they heard something on SIGINT. And, and make that claim. I, I don't give that a whole lot of credibility. Yeah, the headline came from CNN and it said Secret Service is ramped up after s- receiving this intelligent briefing. So if this is the ramped up version, Eric, is this the best that the United States Secret Service could provide for the former president? Well, <laughs> they were already at the equivalent of, uh, of economy class in terms of uh, security level on Saturday. Uh, further distracted from protecting Trump were the needs for Jill Biden, uh, who was doing an event in Pittsburgh the same day. This is the same Jill Biden that instructed the Marine Band, uh, which normally plays Hail to the Chief when the president walks into a room. She had the Marine Band generate her own version of Hail to the First Lady for her walk-on music. So this woman has the will to power. She is a true danger to America. Eric, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, thanks for being on with us. I I know you're 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 busy today, right? You're out and about. Uh, but have you followed any of these developments breaking by the hour? Because it's almost every hour that goes by, uh, I'm shocked. Everyone here is shocked and horrified by what we're seeing. What are some of the things you're hearing that have unfolded today that really trouble you? Well, the the story continues to get worse. I mean, not only did the Secret Service, the advance completely fail to identify the most likely place that a sniper would locate. We call that the sniper hotel, right? It's anyone that stands where the the president will be speaking from, where's the most likely place a a sniper is going to set up? Obviously, they completely missed that. They didn't have uh, those areas covered, didn't have anyone in the water tower or anything else. But now you understand that there was a SWAT team that was assigned, but it was too hot for them to be on the roof, where then the the director of the Secret Service says, well, it's too dangerous because the roof is too steep. That roof was maybe a 12 degree slope. It's it's nothing. It's it's more excuses than time of nonsense on why they did such a horrible job. I think it's very important for people to realize world wars have started because of failed executive security. When the heir to the the throne of the Austro-Hungarian Empire was assassinated in 1914. It literally dragged all of Europe into a world war, uh, which re- rewrote uh, the borders of, of in, in Europe and killed millions of people, which led to World War II, which killed tens of millions of people. Imagine America today if Donald Trump had been struck by that bullet in his brain and killed on Saturday we would be in a very different America right now. And it is really bad to minimize that danger and for the administration to be covering uh, themselves with nonsense and excuses and a lack of accountability. It's an example of why, it's why I wrote in that Twitter post, we suffer from from a whole collection of federal agencies that are bloated, obese, unaccountable and ineffective. And we continue to steer away from a merit-based, execution-based, excellent society to our detriment. We were embarrassed, and we could have literally torn the country asunder if Trump had been killed while supposedly under the protection of the federal government on Saturday. And that's that why dangerous. And that's why Kimberly Cheadle is becoming a household name. She was the secret service. She is still the secret service director. Um, how? Because she she says that she takes responsibility for the disaster, but she's not going to be stepping down. So how do you square those two things that she's uh, she's apparently taking responsibility, yet she still remains in the job? Well, and it's the same way Mayorka said he has 100 percent confidence in her. This is the same guy that opened the federal government, the, the, our federal borders and allowed 12 to 15 million people into the country that don't belong here. Again, it, it's it will also come down to a clear choice. I don't believe there'll be any accountability, any correction 
by the Secret Service or by the administration because that's just not what they do. They haven't had accountability for a complete debacle in Afghanistan. They build a $230 million pier in Gaza, which gets washed away every week. Uh, the Navy loses control of one of the major waterways to the Houthis. And now you have a, a federal agency that's tasked with pr protecting uh, the presidential candidates and they completely fail. It was not Secret Service excellence that saved President Trump. It was bad aim, President Trump turning his head and probably a um, <laughs> the flap of an angel's wings. I mean, that's it's it's we, we literally the nation dodged a bullet on Saturday. Eric, last night, President Trump appeared to have more protection around him. Um, but I keep thinking, I think what a lot of Americans are thinking, which is that between now and November, boy, that's a long ways off. And if this is the level of protection we can expect, that's a problem. Uh, what do you think about the protection he currently has and if they've changed it? And I, I have to ask the same thing that many people I've seen online asking, which I think is very logical. If you were asked uh, to, to assist President Trump in the campaign, would you? Of course, we would. We, we, we will always answer the call if people need help. But uh, and look, the Secret Service has some excellent people in it. I feel terrible for the ones, the excellent ones that are up to the job. I feel terrible that the reputation of the organization has been tarnished by people that don't belong there because they've been hired because of whatever the social engineering priority is of the leadership instead of just solely focusing on excellence and mission performance, uh, integrating private contracted support in with the federal effort would be exceedingly difficult and exceedingly dangerous, especially for the private guys, because the federal bureaucracy will always protect itself and will always hang the private guys out to dry. That being said, if the mission required it and if President Trump actually asked for it, then I'm sure uh, uh, we can find a way to help him out because it is essential that uh, we have a proper election and that um, this is solved. These issues are solved in the ballot box and not with the cartridge box. You mentioned the federal agencies. Of course, the FBI has said that they are jumping in and going to investigate it. But with the way that the federal agencies have handled Donald Trump related issues in the past, how much confidence do you have that they will actually get to the bottom of what happened on Saturday night? I have zero confidence in the federal government being able to investigate itself anymore. I, I hope that Congress will demand a panel of experts of whether it's former highly qualified Secret Service agents, other professional uh, snipers, people that understand the business, give them the subpoena power of Congress, have open publicized hearings, every one of them, let the the disinfecting qualities of maximum transparency let people see what happened and what didn't happen, who made what decisions, were the, were the Secret Service snipers really ordered to not fire first if they saw a guy pointing a rifle at President Trump? Let's, let's let someone answer that question in public. That's the only way we're going to get to the bottom of this. I have zero confidence of federal bureaucrats investigating federal bureaucrats and having any kind of accountability because that's just not been the track record of this administration for the last four years. Eric, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time today. You're welcome.